A lot of people who try Obsidian quit within the first two weeks, not because the app is bad, but because they make a couple of critical mistakes right from the beginning that doom them to failure. Truth be told, I did the same thing when I first started using Obsidian over five years ago. In fact, the first time I opened Obsidian, I immediately closed and deleted the app, deciding it just wasn't for me. Now, obviously I gave it another chance and eventually I got it dialed in, but it took a lot longer than I anticipated. And reflecting on my experience in Obsidian, I can see clearly now that I made a couple of key mistakes the first time around. What I eventually learned the hard way is this. Success with Obsidian is not about using every single feature. It's about building the right PKM habits. So in this video, I wanna share the five things I wish I had known when I started that will set you up for long-term success in Obsidian, even if you've never used a connected note-taking system before. Now, by the way, a lot of the things that I'm gonna share about here are also discussed in the tips and the resources that I've included in my free Obsidian Starter Vault. You can download it for free right now by going to vault.practicalpkm.com. I'll share a little bit more about that at the end, but for now, let's get into the specific things that I keep in mind if I was starting with Obsidian Fresh right now here in 2025. First, I would resist the temptation to import every note that I've ever taken. I actually fell into this trap the first time around when I tried to just bring everything over from Rome Research, and it actually made my vault a giant mess. The problem here is that Obsidian has an importer tool that makes it really easy to bring over your notes from other apps, but doing so can end up just transferring over all the cruft from the app that you were using previously. So if you felt overwhelmed, by a tangled mess of notes before, dumping all of that into a connected notes app like Obsidian is not gonna fix anything. And more importantly, I've noticed that 99% of people who do this eventually give up on Obsidian. They just can't make it work for them. And it's understandable because they start with a really shaky foundation. Before they even grok what the app is or how it can help them be more productive and creative, they just transfer over every note they've ever taken and they assume that the app will somehow automatically make all the connections for them and reveal some deep hidden insights. Here's the truth. If you wanna get more out of your notes and ideas, you have to put in the work. Connections are most valuable when you make them intentionally and you use them sparingly. You have to be deliberate about how you link these things together and ultimately, you need to make sure that you've got good material to work with in the first place. So if you are 100% sure that everything you have in your notes has potential future value, then go ahead and use the Obsidian Import tool. But if not, I actually encourage you to be a little bit more selective about what you bring over into Obsidian and how. If I were starting in Obsidian today, I would create a new vault from scratch and I would get started by making just a couple of notes about topics or projects that I was actively working on. I wouldn't bring everything over. I'd experiment with a small number of notes related to something that I was interested in. I'd force myself to write down what I think about things. Those opinion notes are important. And I'd experiment with making manual connections between my notes to see what sort of insights that those connections might uncover. This way I could experiment with some of Obsidian's core features like linking notes with bi-directional links and creating tags in a way that makes sense for how I would use them in Obsidian going forward, instead of bringing over all that historical cruft that bogged down my system previously. Now, while doing this, I would also be looking to find one specific way that Obsidian could benefit my current productivity or creativity workflows. And once I found something, I'd build that workflow out in a way that it added real practical value, and then I'd slowly layer other workflows on top when and where they made sense. The trick is to resist the urge to go fast. Go slow and steady if you want this to stick. Second, I would resist the urge to go crazy with the community plugins. Now, don't get me wrong, the community plugins are great. They're one of the things that make Obsidian such an incredible app. But if you're new to Obsidian and you open up that community plugins directory to browse, I can pretty much guarantee you will get overwhelmed. There's just too much there and it's all just new shiny until you figure out what you're actually going to use Obsidian for. Now remember, just because Obsidian can do anything doesn't mean it should do everything. And at the beginning, you don't really know what's gonna click for you. You need to experiment a little bit. The place I would begin when it comes to plugins is with the built-in core plugins. 
There's actually quite a bit you can do with these, and looking at what's included right out of the box might give you a few specific workflow ideas. There's some great new options with the web clipper and bases, for example, and by limiting your options, especially at the beginning, it will help you grok the app a lot quicker, and you'll start getting practical value from your PKM system a lot faster. The thing that is new for most people coming to Obsidian from other note-taking apps is usually the bi-directional linking. So if I had to pick a place to focus first, I'd experiment with some of the features in the Graph View and the Note Composer core plugins. That allows you to take sections of your note and extract them as new notes with a link back to the original note. If I were starting with Obsidian today, one of the first things I would do is open up the local graph and drag it into the lower right corner of my sidebar. You can actually do this by clicking on the three dots in the note title bar, then selecting open linked view and then open local graph, then dragging that into the corner of your sidebar. Now, once it's there, it automatically updates based on the contents of the active note. So you have an ever present graph view that shows all the notes that either link to or are linked from the note that you're currently working on. And I believe that seeing this local graph update in real time as you navigate your notes helps you understand the power of these bi-directional links a lot faster. And even though plugins are great because they extend the functionality of Obsidian in new and interesting ways, I'd actually resist installing any community plugins for at least the first week. You really have to be careful about installing too many too fast. And once you get rolling with your notes at Obsidian, that's when you'll start to see where these community plugins actually could make sense. You need to be careful that you don't just make up reasons to use them because you will find those, but you need to select plugins that actually augment your current productivity and creativity workflows. The best thing you can do at the beginning, in my opinion, is to stick with the core plugins at first and slowly add new plugins one at a time as you see ways that they add practical value to your PKM workflows. Next, I would get clear on exactly what job or jobs I'm hiring Obsidian to do. Even though Obsidian is a plain text notes app, with the right plugins, Obsidian can actually do just about anything. And as you get comfortable with the app, the temptation will be there to use it for things that don't really fit with the way that you work. The right mix is gonna vary depending on other workflows and the other tools that you use. But a good general rule I feel, especially at the beginning, is that Obsidian should never be the default. You need to actively resist the urge to turn Obsidian into another everything app because everything apps are usually productivity killers. The danger with these everything apps is that you overlook the right tool in favor of the wrong tool that you already have. As the saying goes, when all you have is a hammer, every problem looks like a nail. And Obsidian is a pretty big hammer. In order to avoid this, you need to be clear on what the jobs to be done are in your PKM system. I have a framework that I use for this that helps me identify what the jobs the apps I'm using are being hired to do and helping me figure out how the information flows between all those different pieces called the PKM stack. Now, if you're interested in diving deeper into that framework, I have another video here which walks through the whole thing in detail. But the bottom line is that you need to know what role each app has in your own PKM system before you can make sure that information flows freely between the different parts unlocking greater insights from your notes and ideas, and helping you be more productive and creative. So for now, recognize the importance of being objective about your workflows. Just because you can do task management in Obsidian, for example, doesn't mean that you should. So start with one workflow that complements the way that you currently manage information to get things done, and then slowly layer additional workflows on top of that, but only as they make sense. Next, I'd resist the urge to capture everything straight into Obsidian. If you're used to treating your notes app like an archive, you're probably used to capturing anything and everything into it. You just dump things into the archive because you can always go back and search for those things later, and that way you make sure that they're there in case you really need them. But when it comes to your notes and ideas, less is often more. After using Obsidian for over five years, I realize now that the real value comes not from capturing new things, but from developing and refining the ideas that are already in my vault. I have another framework called the Creativity Flywheel that I've shared quite a bit about lately, but if you wanna dig deeper, here's a video that goes through that whole framework and how you can use it to make creating easy and effortless. The TLDR here is that the quality of notes that you have in Obsidian is the important thing, not the quantity. You want more signal, less noise when working with your notes and ideas. 
I believe it's better to only capture the things that really are valuable. So I actually capture things to drafts on my iPhone first and then transfer things over later once I get some distance from those ideas. And I find that the more time I give them, the more clearly I can see what they really are. Often my ideas seem great in the moment, but once I get some distance, I realize they're really not all that exciting. So those I just put into my drafts archive, but occasionally an idea ages like a fine wine and I get more excited about it. And those are the good ones. Those are the ones I wanna curate into my Obsidian Vault. Now I estimate that only about 10% of the information that I capture in drafts actually gets transferred to Obsidian. But as I mentioned earlier, it's the quality, not the quantity that really counts. So if I was starting with Obsidian today, I would set up a separate capture bucket. I would use that to capture ideas in the moment to make sure that they didn't fall through the cracks, but I would not automatically pipe those into my vault and I would be very careful about what actually made the cut. Now finally, the last thing I would do is to make sure that I have a regular routine of making something new out of those component pieces that I've collected. One of the biggest PKM mistakes I see people make is that they capture things, but they never try to create anything new from what they've collected. Personally, I believe your mind is like a water wheel. In order for the wheel to turn, there has to be an input and an output. You don't need to make a public blog post or a YouTube video like this one from the information that you collect, but you do need to decide what it means for you personally. Now, the output could be as simple as creating an opinion note where you codify your thoughts on a topic, but there does need to be an output in order for that wheel to keep turning. No one else ever needs to see it, but I wholeheartedly believe that you need to create something from what you consume. And as you do, it creates more open loops for things that pique your curiosity and that makes it easier to identify the things that resonate. So the quality of the things that you capture tends to increase over time. So if I was starting with Obsidian today, I would make sure that I had a regular routine of making something new from those mental Lego bricks that I've collected. And one way to do this is just to develop a simple daily note habit using the Daily Notes core plugin. While I tend to use the Daily Note for digital journaling at the beginning, I'd actually recommend using it to codify your thoughts on things. I would actually just spend a few minutes each day jotting down key ideas, tasks, or thoughts, and then forcing myself to write about what I thought about the information that I felt compelled to capture. That's the important question. What does this mean to me? Now, over time, these notes would create a valuable web of knowledge that grows organically as your PKM needs evolve, but the habit of sense-making through the keyboard, I feel, would help accelerate the value that you would be able to get from using the app. So there you have it. Those are the five things I would do if I were starting fresh with Obsidian right now in 2025. Just to recap, here they are again. First, I would download Obsidian and open up a blank new vault. I'd begin to add a few notes based on things that I was thinking about or wrestling with, and I'd force myself to write down my opinions and create a few intentional links between these notes. I'd start to experiment with some core plugins like Daily Notes, the Graph View, especially the Local Graph and Note Composer, but I'd resist enabling community plugins at the beginning and see how far I could get with the vanilla features first. Once I got comfortable, I'd identify the places where Obsidian really fits in my PKM stack, get clear in the jobs that I'm hiring it to do, and then slowly layer things on top of that over time. I'd make sure that I had a separate capture bucket that didn't automatically send things over to my Obsidian Vault, and I'd schedule regular sense-making time where I would allow my thoughts to become disentangled as I write about what I think about things. Now, as I mentioned in the beginning, if you want more tips and resources to help you get up and running with Obsidian, check out my free Practical PKM Starter Vault. It has a collection of tips and resources that are all broken down by category, from basic PKM concepts to essential core features to time-saving keyboard hotkeys. If you could use a little help getting more out of your notes and ideas in Obsidian, you should definitely check it out. You can download it for free right now by going to vault.practicalpkm.com. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in another video.